from the Fairmont Hotel in the heart of Silicon Valley, it's theCUBE, covering When IoT Met AI, the intelligence of things. Brought to you by Western Digital. Hey, welcome back everybody. Jeff Frick here with theCUBE. We're in downtown San Jose at the Fairmont Hotel at a little show called When IoT Met AI, the intelligence of things. Talking about big data, IoT, AI, and how those things are all coming together with with uh, virtual reality, artificial intelligence, um, augmented reality, all the fun buzzwords, but this is where it's actually happening, and we're really excited to have a pioneer in the space. He's Jack McCauley, he was a co-founder at Oculus VR, now spending his time at UC Berkeley as an innovator in residence. Jack, welcome. Thank you. Yep. So you've been watching this thing evolve, obviously Oculus way out front in kind mm -hmm. of the, the VR space, and of course I think, I think augmented reality in some ways is even more exciting than just kind of pure virtual reality. Right. So what do you think as you as you see this thing can develop from the early days when you first sat down and started putting this all together? Well, uh, I come from a gaming background. That's what I did for 30 years. I worked in video game development, and uh, particularly the hardware and things, console hardware and well, That's so right, forth. you did the uh, Guitar Hero, Guitar if I Hero. recall. Yeah, that's I right. I got that one at home. Mm -hmm. We built their guitars and designed and built their guitars for, for Activision and uh, when we were part of Red Octane, which is a studio. I primarily worked in the studios, not the headquarters, but I did some of the IP work with them too, so. Um, and, uh, to your question, um, what has, uh, ha what, is, what is, you know, when you produce a product and put it on the market, you never really know how it's going to do. Right. And uh, so we, make, we made two developer kits, put them out there, and they exceeded our expectations. And, um, that was very good. It means that there is a market for VR. It's, there is. Um, we produce a consumer version, and sales are not as way, what we expected for, the, for that particular product. That was designated towards PC gamers and, and hopefully console games. But what has done well is the mobile stuff has exceeded at everyone's wildest expe expectations. I heard numbers. Um, Gear VR, which is Oculus design product form, we sold seven million of those. That's a smash hit. Now, worldwide, for phone-mounted VR goggles, it's about 20 million. And that's just in two years. So that's, that's really intriguing. Um, so what has happened is it's shifted away from an expensive PC-based rig with you know, $700 or whatever it costs, plus $1,500 for the computer to something that costs $50 and right. you stick your cell phone in it. And that's what people, uh, it doesn't give you the best experience, but that's what has sold. And so I w if I were doing a startup right now, I would not be working on PC stuff, but working on mobile stuff. Right. And the next thing I think is, which will play out of this is, um, and, and I think you mentioned it prior to the interview, is, is the 360 cameras and, and Google has announced um, a camera that they're going to come out, and it's for their VR 180 initiative, which allows you to see 180 video in stereo with a cell phone strapped to your face. And uh, that's very intriguing. Um, there's a couple of companies out there working on uh, similar products. Uh, Lucidcam, which is a, a startup company here, has a, a 180 camera that's very, very good. And they have one coming out that's in 4K. Uh, they just launched their product. Um, so, to answer your question, it looks like um, what is going to happen is, is for VR is that it's a cell phone strapped to your face and a camera somewhere else that you can view and experience a concert. Imagine taking it to a concert or a sporting event where 5,000 people can view your video, or 10,000 from your seat. That's very intriguing. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. I had my first kind of experience, uh, just not even 360 or, or, or live view, but I, I did a Periscope from the YouTube concert um, here at Levi Stadium a couple yeah. of months ago, just to try it out. I'd never yeah. really done it. And it was fascinating to watch the engagement of people on that application who had either seen them the prior week in Seattle mm -hmm. or were anticipating them coming to the Rose Bowl, I think, you know, within a couple of days. Yeah. Um, and to have an interaction just based on my little, mm -hmm. you know, mobile phone, I was able to find yeah. a rail, so I had a pretty steady, a steady vantage point. Right. It was fascinating, a different way to experience media as well as engagement, as yeah. well as kind of a crowd interaction totally. beyond the people that happen to be yeah. kind of standing in a circle. 
you, what is, what's intriguing about VR 180 is that anybody can film the concert and put the video on YouTube or stream it through their phone. Um, and formerly it would require a $10,000 camera, stereo camera, um, set up professionally. But can you imagine though that uh, a crowd, you know, sourced sort of thing where the media is sourced by the crowd. Right. And everyone, anyone can watch it with a, with a mobile phone. That's what's happening, and, and I, I think. And um, with Google's announcement, um, uh, it even that reinforces, in my opinion anyways, that that is, is where the market will be. Right. And it's Live cool. events, sporting events. That's, right, yeah. it's an experience, right? It all comes back to kind of experience. Yeah. People are so much more experience driven these mm -hmm. days than I think thing driven. Uh, mm -hmm. from everything from buying cars versus taking an Uber and you see it over and over and over again. People yeah. want the experience, but not necessarily, yeah. uh, as the CEO of Zora uh, said, the, the, the straps and straddles of ownership, you know, let me have right. the fun, I don't necessarily want to own it. But I think the other thing that gets less talked about, get your opinion, is really the, the, the um, kind of combination of virtual reality plus the, rea plus real, the real world, augmented mm -hmm. reality. Yes. We see the industrial internet, of things all the time where you know you go take a walk on that factory floor, yeah. you put your goggles on, and not only do you see what you see that's actually in front of you, but now you can start to see, it's almost like a heads up display, certain characteristics yeah. of the machinery and this and that are now driven from the database side back into the goggles, mm -hmm. but now the richness of your observation yeah. is completely changed. Yes, and, and in some ways, um, when you think of what Google did with Google Glass, um, not as well as we'd like to right. see but for it happen, first, but you know, first attempt. Yeah, they're way ahead of their time. And um, there will come a, come a time um, when, um, you know, um, Snap has their specs, right? Have you seen those? It's not yep. augmented yep. reality, yep. but there'll come a time when you could probably have a monocle on your face and, and see the kinds of things you need to see. You, would, you know, if you're driving a car, for instance, that in a heads-up display or a projector projecting right into your retina. Right. So and uh, so, I think that's the main thing for augmented reality. Will people? I mean, uh, you, you Pokemon Go. You know, that's kind of an AR game, and you know, in a way, you look through your cell phone, and the character stays fixed on the table, right? You know, or wherever you're looking for it. Um, I mean, they, that uses a, that's a mobile device to do that. I can imagine other applications that use a mobile device to do that, and, and I'm aware of people working on things like that right now. So, right. Yeah. So do you think that the breakthrough on the mobile versus the PC-based system was just good enough was good enough? Um, and being able yeah. to just experience it that so easily, you know, I mean, Google yeah. gave out hundreds and hundreds and hundreds cardboard. of thousands of the cardboard boxes, so mm -hmm. wow. Yeah. Well, uh, it didn't mean that Gear VR didn't, didn't move into the market, it did. Right. You know, it did anyways, but um, t to answer your question, um, uh, about AR, um, you know, I I think that um, you know without having good localism. I mean, the problem with wearing the Google Glass and, and I mean, excuse the Google Cardboard and and Gear VR is it kind of makes you sick a little bit. And, right. And nobody's right. working on a localization part, like how to get that get rid of the nausea effect. I watched uh, a video um, that was filmed with Lucid Cam um, of the Pride Parade in San Francisco. And I put it on, and somebody was moving with the crowd, and I just felt like it felt nauseous, you know. So that problem probably is a, a, one I would a, attempt to attack, you know, if, if I were going to build a company or something like that right now. But right, yeah. But I wonder too how much of that is just kind of getting used to the format, you know, because people when they first put yeah. them on, for sure, they're just like ah. But you know, if you yeah. settle in a little bit, and you know, our eyes are pretty forgiving you, you, and get used to things pretty quickly. Your mind can accustom, get accustomed to it to a certain degree, but even I get nauseous, and I don't get nauseous very easily. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so your 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 title should just be Tinker. I looked at your yeah. Twitter handle. You're building all kinds of fun stuff at, yeah. in your in your uh, not a garage, but your big giant lab. Yeah, so, right and you're working at Berkeley, what are some of the things that, that you can share that you see coming down the road um, that people aren't necessarily thinking about that's going to mm -hmm. take some of these technologies to the next level? I got one for you. Uh, so you've heard of autonomous vehicles, right? Yep, yep. And, and you've heard of HoloLens, right? Yep. The, the HoloLens is a augmented reality device you put on your head. It's got built-in localization and it creates what's, it uses what's known as SLAM or S-L-A-M to build a mesh of the world around you. Um, and with that mesh, the next guy that comes into that 
virtual world that you mapped um, will get will be way ahead. In other words, the map will already exist, and he'll modify upon that. And the, the mesh always get, always gets updated. Can you imagine getting that into a self-driving vehicle just for safety's sake? Um, mapping out the road ahead of you. The vehicle ahead of you has already right. mapped the road right. for for you, and you're adding to the mesh and adjusting the mesh. So, I think that that's you know as far as HoloLens is concerned and their their localization system, that's going to be really relevant to self-driving cars now, whether or not it'll be Microsoft's Slam or somebody else's, but I think it, I think that's probably the best, that's the, that's the good thing that came out of HoloLens, and that will, that will, you know, bleed into the self-driving car market, right. yeah. It's a big data machine, data crunching number, and in Jobs, he was actually looking at this a long time ago, I was like, what, what, what can we do? And um, with with self-driving vehicles, and, and I think he abandoned the idea because he realized he had a huge computing and data problem. Well, that was ten years ago. Right. Um, things have changed, you know. Right. So, uh, but I, I think that that's the thing that will possibly come out of um, you know this AR stuff is that localization systems can be transported into other areas of technology and self-driving cars and so forth. Yeah. I just love autonomous vehicles because everything gets everything gets gets distilled and, and, and applied into that application, which is such yeah. a great application for people to see and yeah. understand, it's so tangible. Yeah, it, it may change the way we think about cars, and you may just not ever own a car. Oh, I think it's, one up. I think absolutely. Yeah. This is the car industry, it's ownership, it's mm -hmm. it's usage, it's yeah. um, frequency of usage, how they're used, it's not a, a yeah. steel cage anymore for safety yeah. as the crash rates yeah. go down significantly. I think there's a lot yeah. of changes. You buy a car and it sits for 20 hours a day. Right, right, know, right. Unutilized. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, Jack, I hope uh, maybe I get a chance to come out and check out your lab one time because you're making all kinds of cool stuff. When's that car going to be done? Uh, I, 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 I took it upon myself to remodel a house at the same time I was doing that. So, But the car is moving ahead. Uh, it's September. I think I can get it started. Okay. Get the engine running and get the powertrain up and running. Um, right now I'm working on the electronics and we have um, an interesting feature on that car that that we're going to do an announcement on later. So, okay, yeah. we'll look out for that. We'll keep watching the Twitter. All right, All right. thanks Thank for uh, taking Thank a few you. minutes. All thanks. right, that's Jack McCauley, I'm Jeff Frick. You're watching theCUBE from When IoT Met AI, the intelligence of things in San Jose. We'll be right back after this short break. Thanks for watching.